in sync with the forces of darkness, compatible with the force of insight way beyond your thoughts. Unaccompanied or in groups, I am a creature who will inflict disaster, plague, and death. My initial stages were humble and benign. In the heat of the summer, along the holy rivers of the Nile, I appeared from the mud of the riverbank. From the earth where all life begins, I emerged as a god. As a mark of respect, a temple at Terados was constructed. I had come into the world of people. I was endowed with prudent judgment and could predict the future. I hoarded for bad times ahead, amassing my food store for difficult times to come. I always picked the finest corn and the very best grain with which to feed upon. In another way, I brought signs of riches and luck to the ancient Romans. But sadly for the Dormice, my cousin, culinary tastes weighed against them. But for simple mortals, I was more than a foodstuff. In early Greece, I was a cohort to the gods. As the mouse god, Smintheus, I was picked by Apollo as food for his serpents. Such a bond with divinity is still recognized by Hindus. In a place where most of the creatures are worshipped, I assumed a new role. My prudence and knowledge meant that Ganesh, the elephant-headed god of wisdom, wealth and booming venture, picked me as his transporter. I consumed everything that was offered, eating everything I could devour so that my population grew considerably. And with the population increasing every day, my horde spread all over the world to every jungle and building. Even today, my babies can throng in every fissure. My ability to gnaw meant that opponents of early tribes were beaten. Writers talk of my strength to nibble through the leather shell and arms of the Philistine forces of the Middle East. But it was in the western lands of Europe that my terror was strongest. On my back, I carried a creature of venom and bubonic infection. Sweeping from all over the Asian plains, I was to inflict death and devastation. One third of the population perished. Battle and death followed me. 
and people believed it was the end of the world, they attempted to retaliate in any possible way. Many efforts were made to wipe me out. All of them were unsuccessful. Today, in Germany, people celebrate the occasion when I plagued the flourishing Hamelin town. A mercenary piper was appointed to free the town of my sons and daughters. His tune attracted them from every corner of the town. But then he took the children too. From city to sea, I still have omnipresent powers that instill fear in people. I have traveled the four corners of the world, and sailors everywhere see signs of doom in my deeds. If I were to leave a ship before its departure, it was a sure sign that the journey would end in disaster. The ship and everybody on board would die. In the eyes of the Christian church, I have always been regarded as an omen of devastation. Even in the most serene places, my evil has spread. As an avatar of the devil, I devoured in Eden's garden, gnawing on the roots of the tree of life itself and stealing the garden's fruits. I have the strength to take everything. I have had many foods in many places. To the tribes of the American West, I have gnawed more than just food. And in so doing, I have exposed my biggest strength and the frailty of others. Who else could consume the moon? At night, Hindus of Rajasthan worship the deity Karniji. Here, in their nightly ritual, they revere her and her kin. These are members of her family, born again as rats. So we are welcomed, invited to take part in the ritual as members of the family. Here, I have become the tiny creature that sits in the company of prominence. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required.
When the rest of the world was still evolving, I was worshipped by the ancient Egyptians. In the shape of a noble baboon, I became the earthly incarnation of Thoth, the sacred god. I was a scholar and writer, the godly creator of speech, and it was through my words alone that the entire world was created. Knowledge and magic were in my gift. I was there at the entrance of the underworld, weighing the hearts of the people long gone and against the feather of truth. And for those found wanting, it was I who led the evil to their punishment. Stories about my monkey intelligence reached Africa and beyond. According to a tale in Swahili folklore, I befriended a shark who, in return, offered to take me to his king. Although I smelled a trap, I agreed unwillingly. During our journey, he told me that his king was unwell and he needed to eat my heart to survive. I responded by saying that I had left my heart on the tree, so he had to head back to get it. Safe on shore, I laughed at how I had fooled the shark. So people, even today, think that I'm scared of water, but not every time things are what they appear to be. For some, I am a clever old monkey, but for others, I am just good to be made fun of. My hanging nose and pot belly are ridiculed in Indonesia. The proboscis monkey is known as Dutchman. While in the rainforest of Brazil, the red-faced ukari is mocked as an Englishman. The legends of the Mayan world speak of a time before the present world came into being when humans were created as wooden mannequins by the gods. Though they looked human and also spoke so, they turned a blind eye towards their creators. The earliest humans were annihilated and overthrown amid turmoil and upheaval. The monkeys that are their last trace live high up in the forest canopy, and some are still challenging their fall from grace. Up in the tallest trees and on the largest mountains, I dwell between heaven and earth. Here, I have changed into an ambassador of the gods. At these places, Shinto priests leave their offerings to the spirits. I arrive to listen to their prayers. And, as it suits a holy messenger, I pass on their choicest gifts. I safeguard the sacred shrines from evil influences in Japan. My name is used as a warning. I am not like mortals, my mind is chaste, untarnished by the evil that others see, hear and speak. Throughout India, I am worshipped and admired. 
My devotees bring extravagant offerings to my temples, but with so many temptations before me, I may forget about my sacred status sometimes. Even I may occasionally surrender to become a cheeky monkey. So how was such a high position bestowed upon me? And why have I been granted the freedom of the cities? The answer is found in the legend of Hanuman, a divine monkey king. In the eternal conflict between good and evil, I, Hanuman, sided with the good, and the ancient carvings are proof of my courageous deeds. Once an evil king abducted the gorgeous wife of Lord Rama and kept her against her wish. I was the one who discovered her. With the aid of my monkey army, I attacked the city. And after a monumental battle, the evil king Ravana was killed. After that, when Rama and his wife Sita reunited, the people celebrated. For my service, I asked no reward. And because of this, I became an everlasting symbol of kindness. It is still believed that I cry for others, not for myself. Even today, I am the holy protector of all villages. My revered army is welcomed in all places, a symbol of divine favor, safeguarders of cattle and crops. And annually, from India to Bali, monkey voices ring out in jubilation and in tribute to my bravery.